praise the Lord. Shall we rise up on our feet as we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Let's celebrate Jesus, Jesus, the light of the whole world. Let's celebrate the King Himself. Let's celebrate the one we have come to gather on to. Let's celebrate the man of Galilee, the humble Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. All over the house this evening, let's celebrate Jesus. It's all about you. Let's lift up Jesus in the house today. Every day, super pony and the Galaba Yada day. You are the one that matters. We welcome your glory. We welcome your presence. We welcome you as the light of the whole world. We welcome your shining tonight. We give you glory for all you are coming to do. We thank you for what is about to happen here tonight. We worship and adore you. We celebrate you, oh God. You are welcome to the house tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's make a demand on the mercy of God tonight. Let the mercy be laid upon us tonight. Let your mercy be upon the house. Let your mercy be upon every soul. Oh God, every child that sleeps in here. Let the mercy of God flow here. If your mercy forgive us of any sin we have committed that can hinder the food. Your flow all over the house tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's bring the blood upon the atmosphere tonight. Let the power of the blood electrify this place. We bleed the blood of God. We bleed the blood. Lika Andre Kesut of her upon every heart, upon every soul. It can prove us. Let the light of God come. 
When we come for light, we come for Jesus. When we come for light, we come for consuming fire. When we come for light, we come for the world. We come for light tonight. Let there be visitation of the light. Let there be visitation of the fire. Let there be visitation for revival. Let there be encounters in the house. Let the people encounter the light. Let situation encounter the light. Let there be word of the Lord. Let the word of the Lord shine forth into Let there be revival tonight. Let there be revival tonight. Let the fire burn in every heart. Oh God, fire your word, fire. Every song tonight, let the fire burn. Let the fire burn tonight, oh God. Let the atmosphere be charged. Let the current of the atmosphere be awesome. Let the great power come be here tonight. Let the will of God, oh God, be explained tonight. Oh Lord, take control, have your way. In your life, cause us to see light tonight. In your life, cause us to see light tonight. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Makalaba. Oh God, send your word, send your counsel, send your kingdom, send your word to set everybody on fire. Send your word, oh God, to set every church on fire. Send your word, help us to carry the word, the right word to the right people in the right situation. Oh God, tonight in the name. Let your word come with authority, oh God. We clear it with precision. Let your word prevail, oh God. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus was speaking. The power was there to heal. Let's call for the power to heal. The power to heal. The power to save. The power to heal. The power to save. The power to deliver. The power to transform. The power to change. Let it be present be present here tonight. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let's ask for the utterance of uh, shot of you shot tonight. Uh, of you shot shot upon your servants, oh God. On your servant that will minister. Upon your servant that will bring the word. Uh, upon every soul that will minister in one capacity or the other. Let there be inspiration of the moment. Uh, let there be unction to function. Let the doors of utterance be open. Let there be inspiration for them to speak. Uh, to bring forth the mind of God. The counsel of God in the name of Jesus. Uh, Let's commit the vision here to God that the grace of God, the hand of God, rest heavily upon your servants, oh God. Oh God to minister and the katuto for Yakade and the Alemba Druka sit the Malaba. Oh God, let you have a unity in the spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Now pray and say, Father, don't let me leave this room. This is where that I've entered in the name of Jesus. Let me live with an encounter. Let me Something that I will not be able to recover from. Oh God, Nika Abraka said again, let there be one blessing, let there be miracles. Don't let any life that we step here tonight that is already here that are coming on the way. Don't let any of us go back. He said, where we are coming in the name of Jesus. Oh God, don't let any stone be left unturned. Let there be unusual encounter. Let there be unusual encounter with Jesus. Let there be revival. Let there be encounter with Jesus, let there be encounter. Moses had an encounter. Oh God, let every Moses here have an encounter tonight. Let there be encounter. The encounter, the fire, and the end. Let there be encounter, oh God, that we renew our relationship with Jesus. Let there be an encounter that we cause us to take the fire back to our churches. Let there be encounter with the glory of God. Let there be encounter, oh God, tonight with the word of God. Don't let
the ministry of Reverend Bankole Akisha Iwasi takes us into the very presence of the Lord in the acts of worship tonight. Let's just put our hands together as we glorify Jesus tonight. Hallelujah.
you are faithful, you are not a man, oh. I give you glory, I give you praise. I give you glory, I give you praise. I give you glory, I give you praise. You are faithful, you are not
of the body of Christ gathered here tonight and I will not be tempted to start mentioning him but right now all the way from the prayer house from the Getsemane ministry we have the ministry of the Getsemane choir men and brethren put your hands together as we receive their ministry tonight hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. how many of us are tired of worshiping God tonight you are tired of worshipping God, let's just leave your hands together. If you are not tired of worshipping God, I would like us to rise up on our feet again this evening. Hallelujah. If you cannot rise up, just make sure you are worshipping God. Just make sure you are worshipping God. And you can't get tired of worshipping God. Because they are never coming tired of loving you. The Bible says that the steadfast love of our God never ceases. It says His mercies never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Our hands and worship the name of the Lord. Come and wave your hands to me. Even if you are seated, just wave your hands to the King of Glory. If you don't have anything to be thankful for, be thankful for First Peter 2 9. The Bible says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people that we may show forth the praises of He that has called us from darkness into His marvelous light. If somebody is grateful for that tonight, come and wave your hands to Jesus. Light of the world, you stretch
forevermore. I know that when the choir will say, let the light come, it's always very difficult for believers to open their mouths and to say some bogus things. Hear this one, as I prepare the Zion singers, the oldies are coming to bless us in the course of this moment. Whether there was no light before, hear this, everything you need is in the hand of somebody somewhere. All that you can ever pray for, somebody has it and is not using it somewhere. So when you want to sit, stand like God and call those things that be not as though they were, you are the one that is not seeing them, they actually exist. Hallelujah. So when the choir said the light has come, I want you to believe that the light is actually here. Men and brethren, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, I want you to say, let my light come. I can't hear you, saints of God, let my light come. Let my light come. Glory be to God forevermore. Tonight, like I said, these are one of the encouragements, those of us who are still younger, that we have when we see them in their 70s, 80s, and night is still standing to declare Jesus as Lord. We are further encouraged and strengthened to go ahead and still say, Jesus is still Lord. We will worship until we leave the surface of the earth. It is with great joy tonight, men and brethren, that I'd like to welcome the Zion singers. Appreciate with me these elderly ones, these oldies, as they come youthfully singing unto the King of Kings. Declaring the Lordship of Jesus. Let's put our church, you will celebrate them more than this. Let's do it some more. Hallelujah. Let's do it. God bless you, real, real good. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. We are glad to have you blessing us tonight. We are so excited to see you giving praise to the name of our God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Beloved, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. It's a day of joy to see them. Worth
we worship him. My dad's music in choir. As uh, Antiana was coordinating the choir, I suddenly occurred to me the she was 77. Wow. Uh, not yet, not yet. Five mm -hmm. days to come. In five days to come. In five days to come. She will be seventy-seven. you. May the Lord strengthen you in the Lord. As I watch you jump in. Hey. We've got places to go. we got things to do. Hallelujah. Yeah. I will go write a new diary when I get to. I think I came to my another 2019 to see another one. Wow. Let's put our hands together one more time. And tell her before we close this service today. It will be a great honor for the congregation to be praying for you on the occasion of your 77th birthday. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. Glory to God. Graciously seated and decked in blue. Uh, they are here tonight to remove the wall of Jericho because they are from the All Saints Church in Jericho. Ladies and gentlemen, celebrate this wonderful choir as they come to bless us. Our Saints Church Jericho. They are going to do the bidding of Father as they chant tonight. Hallelujah.
Nicholas for the hands together for All Saints Choir Jericho Ibado. We are so blessed by your ministry. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together as they take their seats. Thank you. Glory be to God forevermore. Please, the owner of Lexus Black Car 985DA should please go and repack your block in the driveway. 985DA, a black Lexus, please, you can repack so that the way can be turned. Men and brethren who will be receiving the ministry of the Global Harvest Choir. As the blessers tonight, graciously represented. Let's put our hands together as they come up to be a blessing to us tonight, the Global Harvest. Let's go. 
God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no. Let the church say. Lift your voice and say. No one of God.
Celebrate this choir for me as they take their seats. Let's put our hands together one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Global Harvest Choir. God bless you. Real good. Hallelujah. Amen. It is with great joy. Auntie Anna would like to say one or two things about Reverend Victor Adea before he comes up to the microphone. Let's put our hands together for our convener. Place the owner of Mitsubishi. Outlander, please. 
uh, leave the back with a dark gray car, Lagos KGA 477BT. Please, you're on the driveway. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I thought I should say this because these days ministers of the gospel come and they come and they go. There's something special about this very minister of the gospel. When I called him up in March, was it March, Peter? March. It was as if he was expecting my call. You know, you can hardly reach these ministers. You, know, you, you, you have to take a cue and everything. Nobody answered the phone first. He answered it himself. And he said, yes, auntie, yes, auntie. I was so humbled. Now, the thing special about him is that he wears the presence of the Lord. He carries the presence of the Lord. When he comes to speak, you yourself will see that. And then, he is humility personified. I love him with all my heart. My abode, God bless you, sir. Welcome of shall we give Jesus all the glory, the praise, the honor, the adoration tonight. He is our Savior, He is our Redeemer, He is the mediator of a new covenant, He is the true shepherd, the chief shepherd, and we worship Him. Dear Lord, we just want to exalt you. Thank you for your presence that is in this place. Thank you for the way you've been speaking to us and ministering to us. Thank you for anointing every song's minister, every choir. Thank you for the way you've melted our hearts as one, as the body of Christ here tonight. We just want to praise you for it all. And Lord Jesus, you are the reason for it all. You are the one who has redeemed us all, out of our different tribes, tongues, nations, families, backgrounds, denominations, and redeemed us unto one body, one body of Christ in you. And we are so grateful and we are so privileged to be part of that body today. Thank you for gathering us here today. Thank you for Aunt Hannah. Thank you, Lord, for preserving her. Thank you, Lord, for putting this vision in her heart. Thank you for everyone working with her, cooperating with her. To you be the praise, the glory, the honor. We now ask you in Jesus' name, come speak to us. Only use this three lips of clay, but just glorify yourself. And let Jesus and Jesus only be seen here today in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. I am truly humbled and honored to be standing before your distinguished selves to share the word of God in Maranatha 2019. And I know at the hand I could have called the thousand and one ministers by the privilege of her relationships, wife, network of relationships in the body of Christ uh, in this nation. Uh, but I do truly feel humbled and honored to be invited. And I want to honor the presence of all uh, my fathers and mothers here. There is something about the agent that I'm beginning to appreciate in a very special and a distinct way. And I just want to honor our fathers and mothers and thank you for holding forth the word of truth all these years and still serving God even in your holy generation. We will not take that gospel hours, we will not have it. So thank you, thank you very, very much for passing the touch to a younger generation. I also want to say a very big thank you and honor all my fathers and mothers in the gospel and talking about in the clergy now here present. And it's quite a wide area of them, and I just want to honor you all and let you know how blessed I am uh, to be here today. I can see that the people are much at the back there. God bless you, sir. Um, I do really feel one uh, to five. Genesis chapter one, verse one to five. The rainbow one was an injunction to be the quarters of he uh, leaving for another function, but he said he wanted to wait and listen to the word of God. I do truly feel humbled, sir. God bless you, sir. Such a joy to see you again. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. I'm reading from the... Let me, allow me to go to the King James Version. I'm reading from another version. So I realize you may be wondering why the difference in words. So in the King James Version, it reads... 
in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day in the very beginning God was the one who created the heaven and the earth and we acknowledge and, and, and worship him as the creator of the heaven and the earth and one thing about everybody's creation is that it expresses their personality and their power whatever you create expresses you that's why your handwriting says something about your personality your driving habits also say something about your personality uh, and uh, it was quite uh, sobering and frustrating for me as a child uh, not just artistic uh, whereas i married a woman who can pretty much draw almost anything that she sees and I have children who most of them uh, can draw very well like the other. I know quite well they did not get that from me because I cannot reproduce it. So I read the verse 2 and I find a little conflict in my heart with the God that I have come to know. Because when I read verse 2 it says the earth was without form, it was shapeless. It was a bundle of chaos and confusion. It was void and total emptiness. And again, the creation of God was here covered by darkness. And so I have a challenge with verse 2 uh, as a reflection of the work of God. And that has uh, tilted me to the theological position uh, that when the Bible uh, says in the beginning God, the word beginning there according to some Hebrew scholars actually means in the timeless past or in the dateless past before the beginning of the count that when the Bible says God divided the light from the darkness and the evening and the morning were the first day it was the beginning of the count of time the measurement of time did not take place before the beginning here in verse 5. And what that means is there was just an eternal timelessness before time began. So you come to understand that even this God we are dealing with was not a God that began at all. But he was the one that started and created the concept of a beginning. There was no beginning before the beginning began and it was God that began the beginning and he is the one that will end the time at the end of the day. No one but the Bible says God says he is Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending so he is the A and the Z and he is everything in between because according to his word in Ecclesiastes 3 1 to everything under heaven there is a season and there is a time to every purpose. However, God does not live under heaven. He lives above the heavens and so he is not subject to time. He is God from eternity to eternity. God from everlasting to everlasting. He has no beginning and he has no ending. Everything consists in him and to him be the glory, honor, and adoration. Let's give him praise and glory. So in this timelessness, I come to understand that certain scriptures like Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 happen in that period of timelessness because the way I introduced to an interesting character called Lucifer. He is now known as Satan. He is known as the devil. He is known as the act enemy of God. And this Lucifer, who we see later in chapter 1, uh, or later in chapter 3, as the tempter who lured was cast down to the earth 
and limited to this earthly realm by God. He was cast out of heaven due to his rebellion against God. He has been cast out to the earth. During that timeless task was what caused this situation I see in verse 2 that makes no sense. These characteristics of the earth that are not incongruent with the personality of the Almighty God that I have come to know. Because I see confusion here, I see emptiness here, and I see darkness here. And I've come to learn from Paul that God is not the author of confusion. He is a God of order. He is a God of plan. He is a God of objectivity. When he creates, there can't be emptiness because he is a God of purpose. He will not create without a reason. And he is not a God of darkness. First John chapter 1 verse 5 says, This then is the message that we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. James 1 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift coming down from above, from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. And so this God is a luminous God. This God is a God that is a light. In fact, he said in Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, to them that fear my name, and shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, describing his own Son, of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Son, as you end of righteousness, beaming his light. He is the embodiment of all illumination. In Psalm 84 verse 11, the Lord God is a sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Therefore, this confusion here, this emptiness here, this darkness here is not God's creation. Satan was cast down here, but he messed everything up. And every time we see things out of line with God and where we see satanic influence, we find these three things there. We will always find confusion. We will always find emptiness. And we will always find darkness. When we look at the world system and we look at humanity without God, it is nothing but confusion, emptiness, and nothing but darkness. When the world decided to forsake our God, that was what the world got for it at the end of the day. When Adam and Eve forsook the commandment of God not to eat of the forbidden fruit, it was these three things that resulted from it. It was confusion, it was emptiness, and it was darkness. That's why our world today is such a chaotic world. It's such a confused world. The moment you see the world system abandon God's principles, abandon God's word, and decide to go a different way, you will just find confusion, you will find the emptiness in the human heart, and you will find total ignorance and darkness about the Almighty God. And that's all you will see, for instance, in the very foundation of our humanity, which is the family unit. A, a, an abandonment of God's order, of the fact that there should be a man and a woman, a husband and wife. Some decided, no, we want to go it man to man. Some said, we want to go it woman to woman. It's created co confusions that have no ending. Every society that has embraced it, have had to embrace other things. The day they embraced that one, some other people rose up and said, the right that they have to marry who they want, and whatever sex they want, is the right that they also have to marry their animals and to marry their pets. And we see the confusion going on the increase. After some time, some said that they are even not what God created them to be. They are not men. They want to be women. Others said they want to, they are not women. They want to be men. And so they now said there are men, there are women. And then now they decided to create something in between the two uh, called transgender. And the confusion knows no ending. And that's just the truth. The moment the world decides to abandon God, confusion will always result from it. And the moment man goes in the direction of that confusion, no matter how far gone he is, it is nothing but something that will leave emptiness and a void in the human heart. There is a place in the human heart. 
take it. Faith cannot take it. Wealth cannot take it. Sexual pleasure cannot take it. Only God can take that place in the human heart because God created man and is the one who deserves our worship. Let us glory in the house of God. I see hope here before verse 2 is over. And the hope is in the fact that the Bible says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water covering the deep and the spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters the earth was covered by a flood of judgment according to second Peter chapter 3 but the spirit of God moved over the face of the waters he was incubating the confusion he was incubating the emptiness he was incubating the darkness and when the Holy Spirit starts to incubate something good is about to be born when a hen sits down upon her eggs and begins to incubate them. I know the young generation have no idea what we are talking about. But when I was growing up in rural Niger State uh, and, and part of the state, I saw hens, you know, laying their eggs and then sitting on them, incubating them, creating the right temperature and environment for the chicks to hatch. And I saw how life began to come out of those eggs eventually. It is that language of incubation the Bible uses here in the original Hebrew text for moved, for the word moved. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He incubated the face of the waters. He incubated that confusion. I don't know what represents, uh, represents um, a darkness, but I want you to know the Spirit of God is incubating over it tonight. He's incubating over somebody. He's incubating over somebody's marital crisis. He's incubating over somebody's childlessness. He's incubating over situations too difficult for you to handle. God can handle them. He can bring possibility out of impossibility. Our God can bring miracles out of our messes. Our God can bring triumph out of our trials. Our God can bring advantages out of our adversity. There is nothing our God can do. He can turn our failures into success. Our poverty into prosperity. He can turn our darkness into light like he did here. And he can turn every situation around for good. I see hope in this place. Let us give God praise and glory in the house of God. I will read later of this uh, episode here in Genesis chapter 1 in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 it says in verse 3, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them who are lost. In whom the God of this world have, have blinded their hearts and their minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. In other words, if there is anyone that does not believe in God, he says, if anybody does not believe, the problem with them is that if they are lost and do not believe, it's the God of this world. Of God shall shine unto them. Their intellects are blinded. Their hearts are also blinded. He talked about their hearts and their minds also. I'm overjoyed to see the area of intellectuals in this room tonight. And I said to myself, it is not possible. If not that the light of the glorious gospel has shined into your hearts. Because this gospel, according to Paul, is nothing but foolishness to those who do not believe. In 1 Corinthians 1, 18, it says, For the cross perish, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. Foolishness, yes, because we believe the claim of a man, a young man, by the way, who was born in Palestine 2,000 plus years ago, and he claimed he was not an ordinary prophet. He claimed that he was God. And you and I chose to believe a man, that he was not an ordinary man, that he was and is God. We believe he was and is and is to come. We believe he was there in creation. In fact, the claims of John about him in John 1 verse 1 was that in the beginning, this in the beginning, was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. 
The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. John claimed that he was the creator. A claim he made about himself. Was still. Is the claim that because he went to the cross. A place where criminals were crucified. And he was not the only one crucified. The day he was even crucified. There were three of them that were crucified. Two other criminals. One to his left. One to his right were also crucified. Hundreds were crucified in those days. Why will the crucifixion of one man now become your message and my message? Why will you believe it? Why will I believe it? It does not make sense. It is foolishness. You and I believe that out of all those who are crucified, the crucifixion of one man has taken the sins of the whole world away. Intellectuals, does that make sense? Why do you believe it? The light shined into your heart. It was illumination. It was the Spirit of God that allowed that light to shine and it dispelled the darkness. It took you beyond your reason. It let you embrace something that naturally you wouldn't have embraced. But you embraced it. And when you embraced it, it changed your life. It changed your heart. It transformed your personality. It brought miracles to you. It brought order into your life. It brought fruitfulness into your life. And it brought and it brought a whole lot of more illumination into your life. God changed your life forever. I know that I know. As foolish as this message is, it is the greatest truth ever preached. It is the greatest truth that will ever be preached. The power of the resurrection of Jesus is alive today. It's working in me. It's working in you. It's working in our lives. It's the reason why the Bible, which is the message of this gospel, which is the message of this cross, which is the message of this act, is the all-time bestseller in human history. They do not count it among books when they are looking for bestsellers anymore. It has always been, for thousands of years, the all-time bestseller to the glory of God. Let's give him praise and glory for that. Hallelujah to Jesus. It's because it's the message of the light. This is the true light that shines in our hearts and dispels all the darkness. In verse 4 of John 1, it says that the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot dispel it. Love that song that the Gethsemane choir sang earlier. They talked about that light. They said, where is the darkness? Whenever the light shows up, where is the darkness? The darkness cannot stand the light. The light dispels the darkness. And there's no matter how dark the darkness, as you allow the light of the gospel of Jesus into your hearts today, it will dispel all that darkness. And your life will never be God. But I'm grateful to God that the light that got me saved is not the only light that there is. There's so much light the luminous light that lights every man that comes into the world so he continues to shine more and more and more and more light in my heart dispelling darkness and changing me in verse 6 of 2 Corinthians 4 it says for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness that is in Genesis 1-3 the reference to Genesis 1-3 has shined in our hearts it says he has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, he gave the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the person of Christ to you and I. Now, one other part of that song they sang is this because it just sang my message. Is that when that light shines to you, I am the light of the world. Uh, 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 it says, for as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. He that walketh after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In John 9 5, he repeated, he repeated it. He said, For as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. But way back in Matthew 5, 17, he, uh, 5, 14 rather, he looked at the disciples and said, You are the light of the world. A city set up on the hill cannot be hidden. He said, He is the light of the world. Then he said, We are the light of the world. In other words, when the light of the world came, those who come in contact with him, those who allow his light to shine into their hearts, become just like him. They become lights like him. They become luminous like him. They become children of the light like him. We dispel the darkness wherever we go. And it's time. Let the light be the light. 
that, that effect, efficacy of the light is found in its contrast against the darkness. You see, the light should not look like the darkness. That's why we should not look like those who do not have Christ. That's why that is the only way and the only hope that Nigeria has. We need to start looking like the light that we really are. So when we see Christians, we should not see corruption among them. When they get into power, they should not steal our commonwealth like others. When they get into positions of influence, they should promote righteousness and not self-centeredness. We should see Christians not given to greed and avarice, but rather given to love and selflessness. We should see them given to service and justice in our society. We should see them upon the rule of law and stand for it. We should see them upon truth. They are fashion. Uh, because as I have gone uh, come into middle midlife, uh, gradually I see my, my hopes fading away. And I wonder how my fathers and my mothers feel about our nation. Uh, when I was a child, I looked forward to the day my Nigeria will look like the United Kingdom. My hopes are gradually fading away in the natural. Uh, and I'm wondering, what world will my children live? What kind of world will my grandchildren live in? But hope is still rising in my heart that for as long as there is Jesus and for as long as he has children in Nigeria someday the light will shine so brightly that it will overcome the darkness our compromises and our subtle uh, and our, our, our you know subtle uh, compromises here and there uh, have dimmed our light but it is time that we give praise and glory tonight as I round up, I'm encouraged by Ephesians, uh, sorry, uh, I'm encouraged by 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It says, but we all with open face, beholding us in a mirror. As it, last, it says in the old King James Version, literally it says a mirror. The glory of the Lord, that's the glory of the Lord Jesus, are changed into the same image. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You and I can keep changing from glory to glory. We don't have to remain the way we are. That verse of scripture tells me that the victory of the of 2020 ought to be better than the victory of the of 2019. Uh, the one of 2021 ought to be better than the one of 2020. I ought to be becoming a better and better person. And the key to it is beholding Christ in his glory through the ministry of his word. As I continue to look into the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, and I realize the glory of Jesus, the more I see Jesus in his likeness, the more I will reflect the same likeness. Amen. And so my challenge to the body of Christ is, let us stay in the word of God. And as we stay in the word of God, there will be light shining in our hearts. As the light shines in our hearts, faith will keep building in our hearts. As it keeps building in our hearts, we will be walking in victory. Victory over sin. Also over the consequences of sin. We will walk in victory over sickness. We will walk in victory over the poverty that has ravaged our land. We will walk in victory over the powers of darkness. I'm reminded of a man who had a luminous experience in 2014. Paul and Silas had gone down to Lystra. And there they preached Christ unto them. And the Bible tells us about a man who was impotent in his faith, who never had walked in his life. The same heard Paul speak. The Bible says, who steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Now stand unto him, stand upright on thy faith. And the man was made whole. The man was just listening to Paul. As he was listening to Paul, the Bible says Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. And I asked myself, what kind of message was Paul preaching? What was Paul saying? That get this man faith to be healed. And I now realize that also bow. And no one that I joined the psalmist in Psalm 103. And praise the Lord. I said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's rise to our feet tonight and let us respond to the light by lifting up our hearts to him and saying, Heavenly Father, let there be light in my heart concerning every need, every challenge, every crisis that I am facing right now. 
Will you go ahead and talk to the Lord about your personal needs? Will you go ahead and talk to the Lord about your personal challenges and your personal crisis? Whatever it may be in your life, where do you need light? Shine your light to me concerning marriage. Shine your light to my heart concerning my health. Shine your light to my heart concerning my finances. Shine your light to my heart. Oh God, concerning my children. Shine your light to my heart concerning my family. Do it, Lord. To the glory of your precious holy name. Go ahead and pray. I want to agree with you in prayer. While everybody is praying, if you are in this, you say, Pastor Victor, I'm not even born again. I've never understood this message of the cross. But tonight I understand that Jesus Christ is the only life that can save me. I want to surrender my life to him wherever you are, raise up your right hand. I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I want to be born again. I want my sins to be forgiven me. Is there anyone who wants to be saved tonight in this room while we are all praying? Concerning our personal needs, if there be anyone like that, then raise up your hand and hold your hand and pray this prayer after me where you are. Say, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. Say, Have mercy on me, forgive my sins. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. Thank you for saving my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every one, starting with those who just confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, and who ask for the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, that it will transform them, Lord, from darkness to light, and who ask for the miracle of the new creation to take place in their hearts today. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the Spirit will indwell them from today. I pray with each and every one in our situations and circumstances, that Lord, where there is sickness, let there be light. Amen. Where there is poverty, let there be light. Amen. Where there is confusion, let there be light. Amen. Where there is you brought order when the light came. When there was emptiness, you brought fruitfulness after the light came. Bless let there be light in our hearts today. And Lord, we pray for our nation, Nigeria, that through us, light will shine in this nation. Let there be light in our land. From Aso Rock Lord to the remotest village. We ask Lord from the palaces, Lord, uh, to, 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 to Lord, and the, uh, the homeless, the houses of the homeless. Let there be light in this nation. Let there be light in our schools. We ask you to, to illuminate the hearts of our young people. Let not this nation remain the same. Amen. We thank you for answered prayer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Before I take my seat, I just want to welcome Auntie Hannah Ikime. We believe God few days to come. She's seven to seven. And she is certainly alive and well those few days. We want to pray about the prayer for her. Let's welcome her with a big hand as she comes. <laughs> Praise God. Shall we all rise to our feet for a minute, please? And stretch out our hands towards her. Let us all stretch out our hands towards her. And let us pray that the Lord our God will keep us strong. Will renew her youth as the eagles. Let's go ahead. Every good thing we desire for ourselves. Let us go ahead and pray them for her. Let us go ahead and just desire them for her right now. Father, it is a very wonderful opportunity for us as the body of Christ. Segments of your body are represented here. Truly, we know you do not even recognize us in our denominations. You recognize us. Therefore, we lift up our voices as the body of Christ today to pray for your daughter, who is the convener of Maranatha 2019. And we say, Father Lord, we thank you on her behalf for seven to seven good years. We say thank you. Thanks a million, Heavenly Father, for the gift of life, the privilege of living. We give you praise and glory. But of all that she has received in this life, there is nothing like eternal life. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. So for that, Lord, we give you praise and glory. We thank you also for the gift of family. We give you praise, Lord, that you gave her own home. To you be praise and glory. Thank you for the privilege of good education. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of friends. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, of, of brothers and sisters.
sisters in the body of Christ. Thank you for every good thing she's been able to accomplish in life. But not in the differences she has made in society. To you be the glory, the honor, the power, the dominion, and the majesty forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the body of Christ, we now agree together. The Lord, as she stepped into her 78 year, she stepped with renewal of strength, Amen. renewal of youth, Amen. renewal of vigor, Amen. renewal of vitality. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ, your natural force will not abate, your eyes will not grow dim. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, will long life with the Lord satisfy Amen. you and show you his salvation. We say, Lord, that we ask you that for her, nothing you have blessed her with will diminish in the years that are ahead of her. Her finest hours are still ahead of her. Let the past be like the wilderness. Let the future be like the garden of Eden. Take her from strength to strength, from faith to faith, from grace to grace, from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, let me die the death of the righteous and let my end be like his. A pray all about the time. We ask Lord that the end will be the best of her life in the name of Jesus. She will finish well. She will finish strong in the name of at the end, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cars. I have kept the faith. Your word says, Lord, that they that be planted in the house of God shall flourish in the thought of our God. They shall be fat and flourishing. They shall be bringing forth fruit in old age. That is her, her portion in the name of Jesus Christ. She will still be bringing forth fruit. Walking in the fruit of the Spirit. Winning more souls. Taking more lives. Transforming society. Her influence multiplies. Her impact multiplies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keep her in perfect peace we pray. And keep her in soundness of health. Bless her husband Lord. And strengthen him with vigor and vitality. Keep him for much longer time Lord. That they may enjoy themselves together. And continue to be a blessing to this generation. To you be the praise and the glory for answer prayer. In Jesus name and we all say. Let's give glory to Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Reverend Victor Day. I mean, we are so blessed by that one. I thought we we're going to do that to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's just honor the Lord. We are gradually uh, getting to the conclusion of this program by our timing. But before we do that, lifting the lights and also giving glory to the name of our God, I'm going to invite this poet to come. I want you to be sensitive. I want you to get into the spirit of what she's about to do right now. Sister Dawala is there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together as she comes, lifting up the light at the same time. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Holy, mighty, immortal, 
Master, Redeemer from ages past, sanctuary strength and song, who again became salvation, the refuge, impenetrable to temptation, and ever present, tested, where put heaven in trouble. Lord of Sabaoth, Lord of hosts, God of hosts, the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth, light of our life, son of our life, star of our hope, star of our night, oh height immense, unfathomable death, holy is your power above all heights. What of battles, God of harmony, like a strong horn of a mighty fighting bull, you are maker and monarch in shape. You are the glory crown and double honor. In want, you are the plentiful supply never exhausted. In weakness, you are the almighty power. In bond, you are the perfect love. In grief, you are the joy unspeakable. In Satan's darkest hour, when the shadows fall, our smile beneath the tyrant's crown. Our eternal city of refuge, rest in joy, ease in pain. The guiding hand for the untried day. The lifeboat when the life waves roll high, heavenly friend, constant companion, our beginning, our ending, our everything in between. In you we live, in you we move, in you we have our being. You are the living God, enduring forever, the unseen one who never dies, always has been, always will be. You exist in the past. Present and future at the same time. You exist in the everlasting ages past and right out to everlasting eternity ahead. You have never not been. You exist endlessly, ageless one, older than time. There is no reckon in the length of your days. The number of your years is incalculable. A thousand years in your sight are like a single hour. Yesterday, now over. You strive from timelessness to now. You make time, but not bound by time. No time can measure out the number of your days. Jehovah, you are king in heaven enough to kindle a fire. Nor is animal sufficient for a burnt offering large enough to offer to you. The sea is yours. You made it and everything they contain. You made a way through the highly sea, a path right through the mighty waters. Your path led through the sea, a path where no one knew was there, and yet your footsteps were not traceable.
of slaves. They met like once before him. Awari, be only smoke. Awamo, be Jesa. Awamo, be Mioku. bless and impact your environments. Sometimes it's very necessary for us to give him call him by the name he actually bears so that he can do what his name actually carries. Hallelujah. And as you do that, the Lord is going to bless you. It's been very wonderful and awesome being in the presence of the Lord. Our very chief host tonight. It is my, with great pleasure that I'd like to invite Dr. Boiga Adesio to do the very next thing on this program while we round off. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together as he comes to the microphone. Pastor Boyega, please, to the microphone. Glory be to God forevermore. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's been so wonderful this evening. I didn't want it to end. I was expecting two or three more acts. Amen. We want to say thank you to everyone here today. First of all, thanks be to God for making it possible for all of us to gather here today. And it's been really beautiful, so wonderful, so blessed. The presence of the Lord has been here. It's been a marvelous time in the presence of the Lord throughout. First of all, we'd like to thank God for this day because He has made it possible. And then to also thank Mommy, Mrs. Hannah and Kimmy, our auntie and daddy. For organizing this wonderful, wonderful time of fellowship in the Lord in songs and, and that wonderful, marvelous poem that 
We just heard now, lifting up the name of the Lord. God is always blessed. And so I want to thank you all for taking the time out to be here. As you can see, I'm representing my father and my mother, the Lord, in the house. Pastor Ruby, Mommy Sarah Johnson, they could not be here personally because of family, uh, family commitments. And their regards, and they said all of us should have a wonderful time. And I'm so, so blessed that that has happened already. So we want to just let you know that in truly true, we would have loved to be here today, but because of family or engagement, they had to be elsewhere. But they send their love, they send their appreciation, and I thank God that God has more than done what they would have wanted to see had they been here themselves. I want to also thank everyone who has come to this uh, uh, place tonight, both as an observer and a participator, and also as those who have done the songs and the wonderful renditions that have taken place here, all the different people in different places. All the men of God have received the Balamushuka. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. In the back of the thing. I don't know why you're not in the front, sir. But uh, I, I think I understand why. But so God bless you, sir. Thank you so very much. And all the different men of God from different places, different apartments have come here to fellowship with us here today. We have Mr. Amadiyadi, who has been such a wonderful to pronounce the word of God today. I love so much what he spoke about today. He said there will be light in Nigeria. God is working to bring light into our nation. Now you don't worry. God is in firm control. He controls the heavens. The earth is nothing for him to control. Amen. So we're going to see wonderful things happening in this nation in a very, very short while. I guarantee you that. The next decade and the next 20 years are going to be revolutionary in our nation, Nigeria. Things that have never been heard of, things that have never been spoken of, what the Bible says is that I have not seen. And the things that God has planned for those who love, those who serve Him. Nigeria is a destiny nation. Yes. It's going to be the first of the first fruits of the nation that manifests the fullness of the measure of the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ in the earth. So I have absolutely no worries whatsoever. Yes, occasionally you see the papers, you wonder, and you say, ah, what's that? But God is in control. And guess what? He's in control through you and I, his people upon the earth. So it behooves us also to allow him to move in and through us to affect the lives of those in our immediacy and then all throughout the nation of Nigeria. The onus of that is upon us to submit and yield ourselves to all of these things. So I'm truly blessed tonight. I want to thank everyone taking the time to be here, particularly the organizers, and the way for the success of this location tonight. It's really been a marvelous, wonderful blessing. And I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to another 2020. Hello? Amen? Amen. Another 2020. Auntie Anna, I see in the program, you already set the date. That date will stand in Jesus' name. It shall surely come to pass. On the 25th of November, 2020, we'll all be gathered here again for yet another session. God bless you, man. Lord, that you grant your ministry increase on all sides. In the name of Jesus, amen. And there it is. Hallelujah.